Hi, everybody. It's Professor Dan from the University of Colorado Boulder, uh, continuing on our trust creation, trust analysis group of videos. So um, today we're going to assume you got the output from your MATLAB. Um, and again, you can use MD solids. Heck, you could do all the analysis by hand. Um, but in a previous video, we showed you how to build this truss that you see in the middle here. And we see that there's negative 0.866 um, members. So those are in compression. And we see there's positive 0.866 members, and those are in tension. And we see that, um, or we saw from the last video, that the load was applied right at the, at the middle, at the bottom. And it was 1.5, uh, uh -huh. we said 1.5 kips. So um, there's our trust. So now what do we do with it? Those are forces. We want to get to how we actually do an analysis. So we actually want to look at some stresses. So the first things first, um, we can enter in some design parameters. And so let's say our design load is 1.5 kips. That's what we did in our MATLAB. So yeah, let's just enter that in. Um, the other things is we did some testing. So in class, we're doing some testing and we're gonna get some strengths and you're gonna get all of the data and it's up to you to choose some values. Um, I'm gonna choose some values and I'm not saying they're right or they're wrong. Um, but I'm going to choose some from previous uh, semesters and we're going to go from there so we can enter in the spreadsheet. But that's the key with the spreadsheet. If you don't like these values, and I wouldn't, I I definitely look into some of these values. Um, you can make changes and you can come up with your own analysis. So wood strength, let's just say we came up with 10,000, 10 KSI, 10,000 pounds per square inch for our wood strength. Um, Maybe that's a value we saw in testing. Maybe that was the max. Maybe that was the median. Um, yeah, let's just say that that came from testing because it's not too far off, but there's a value there. Wood modulus, um, I'm going to say that that's 1610. And that comes from, we have a resource with all different types of wood. So look up, figure out what type of wood we have. He's doing some research. Um, and that's a value for some types of wood. Um, so why don't we use that? And glear, glue shear strength. Um, let's say we came up with 1,000 PSI from testing. And again, choose the value that works best for you. This would be from testing. You'll have all of the data. You get to choose what works best. So. Now, um, those are our strengths. Those are what will go into our analysis. So how do we do the analysis? Well, that's the thing. So we have all of these forces. So what I have written down are the members AB. This member right here goes from A up. AE, which goes from A over. BE which goes from B down to the middle, and BC, which goes across the top. Now, those are the only ones that I'm going to do today because we can actually see from our analysis that the other members are going to be symmetrical. So whatever we get for AB is going to be the same for CD. Whatever we get for AE is going to be the same for ED. So we only have to do half. But if you're doing this and handing it in, you would want to do the complete analysis and just make sure the numbers match. But for this, we're gonna save a little time because again, I want you to go through this process. So first things first, what were our lengths? Well, the length from A to B was, we said was 11 inches. Um, and actually from A to E was also 11 inches. From B to E was 11 inches. And from B to C was 11 inches. Oh yeah, it was all equilateral. That's how I made my trust and um there we go what's the next thing that we can enter in well let's enter in our forces um so let's say that um we look at a b it's right here that's minus minus 0.866 and then we see a e we scroll down and we see that it's 0 0.433 433 um b e is uh positive 0.866, okay, cool. And then BC is minus 0.866, okay, good. Um, and so now we have to enter in basically our truss width. So what we said to start is it's good to use a three quarter by one half piece of, um, of, of wood. 
So um, question is, what's your width and what's your height? It's up to you, but how about for width, I choose 0.5 and then um, height, I'll use that to be our 0.75. Um, and again, after you go through this, see if that's actually the best choice. It very well may be, but it very well may not be. Um, so what is our cross-sectional height? So the first thing I want to look at are normal forces. So normal forces have a cross-sectional area, which is just width times height. So we'll need that area. So when I put that in, width, and then I hit F4 because I always want the width to be the same. And then our height, we might want to change that. So I'm going to multiply it by that um, D10. And we see that it's 0.375. And if I highlight cells with the, if I hit the down arrow with the shift, it highlights. And if I hit Control D, everything gets filled in nicely. Sweet. All right. And now normal force our normal stress check. So what's our stress? Well, it's our normal force divided by our area. And it's actually um, the absolute value. So I'm going to type in equals absolute value of, let's see, our force divided by our area. Great. So we do that for everything. And we see that, OK. That's looking pretty good. Now, you'll see some of these cells are red, and, and that means that there's a problem. Um, and so that's kind of nice. I'll give you, if you're in my class, I'll give you the format. But that's just known as conditional formatting. So now for our safety factor, we want to check the strength over our stress. Uh, so when it comes to normal stress, we want to check the strength of our, our trust members we want to check that the strength is greater than the stress. So um, by how much is it greater? So we do equal to our strength. And again, we hit F4. That puts dollar sign, so that doesn't move. Divided by our stress. Oh, good. It's positive. And it's about four. Oh, one's eight. That's great. I'm going to get rid of this on the side here, the safety factor. We'll do that at the end. Um, so on this safety factor, we are good to go. So now let's go to buckling. So remember, buckling's a little different. Buckling, because we have things in tension and compression, buckling, we only worry about buckling for members and compression. So in our case here, we only care about it for A, B, and B, C, for what it's worth. Now you can check all of them, um, but we got to remember our buckling equation. So buckling, buckling equation is, let's see. It was equal to pi squared times oh, the modulus h3. I'm going to make sure that doesn't move. OK, that's good. Times the minimum, times the minimum I. Why do I want the minimum I? Ah, because it's going to buckle in the weakest dimension. So how do I figure out what the minimum I is? Well, if I take the maximum of the width or the height, maximum the width or the height, and I'm only multiplying that times one, and we know that they're all rectangular, and I multiply that times the minimum of the width, oh, the width f4, and the height, and I raise that cubed. Remember, we have to take the i, which is 1 12th bh cubed, so we have our B, we have our H. Oh, wait a minute, I got to multiply it by 1 12th. And that's how we calculate I, which is the moment of inertia. And then we have to divide that by, all right, the L. But now here's the key, what is our L? Well, our L was 11. 
But if we actually think about it, we don't have the full L that is potentially unsupported. We have some gusset plates. And what we saw is that we have up to 40% of our gusset plates um, covering our members. So we multiply L by 0.6. And in our equation, it's L squared. All right, whoops, doesn't like something. Um, it says there's a name in there. Oh, it's pi. Oh, bummer. Pi, you have to do an open and close parentheses in Excel. There we go. All right. Oh, sweet. So what does this say? This says the maximum load that this can withstand, this member can withstand without buckling is 2.85. Sweet. That sounds good. How much did we actually apply? That's 2.85 kips. We actually applied 0.87, so our safety factor, 2.85 divided by, that's how much we could apply, divided by how much we did apply. So our safety factor is 3.29. And I can control C, I can copy that, and I can paste that formula um, wherever we have a um, negative load, because buckling is only compression. Um, great. And when we have tension, we don't have to worry about buckling. All right, great. So last one, shear. Okay. So the first things first, um, what's our overlap? What's our allowed overlap? So in our case, what is our allowed overlap? Well, it said that our allowed overlap for our gusset plates was 0.2. And so the amount of overlap that we have is 0.2 times 11. Okay. Um, and now our shear is equal to our force applied. We'll call that shear stress. Oh, we should make that bigger so you can see it all. So our shear stress is equal to our force divided by, let's see, what's our area? Well, it's our overlap allowed. That's a length times our height. Okay. And we see that, oops, we probably want the absolute value of that. And we see that our shear stress is 0.5 KSI. And so, What's going to be undergoing that shear stress? Oh, that's, that is glue, right? So where that overlap is, that's how we're gluing these parts together. So when we look, we have KSI for shear stress, and we have PSI for shear strength. So overall, I'd say we're looking pretty good but I'd say we're actually probably looking even better. Why is that? Well, if we think about it, our overlap allowed, we have 0.2, but we're allowed overlap on both sides. So our area that we're dividing by is actually two times that. All right. So our shear stress is actually even lower. Now, the problem is our shear strength here was in PSI, and our shear stress here is in KSI. So we got to compare apples to apples. I have an idea. Let's change this to KSI and say that that's one. All right. So now, remember, our safety factor is equal to our strength divided by our stress. All right. Great. And oops. Oh, look, I didn't do my um, dollar sign. So remember, you can hit F4, you put a dollar sign if you don't want things to move. So then I highlight going down and I hit Control D. Oh, look at that, we're at 3.81. All right, we are good to go. All right, so now, what's my minimum safety factor? I have three things I care about. I care about normal stress, I care about buckling, and I care about shear stress. So the thing I can do is I can take what we have and I can say, what is the minimum 
of, let's say, normal stress, buckling, and shear stress. And I take the minimum safety factor because the safety factor, the bigger it is, the safer I am. And I hit enter and it says 3.29. And then I can just drag that down. And we see that we're at 3.29. We're at 7.62. And then this one here is 3.29. Um, so our minimum safety factor is actually 3.29. Um, and yeah, so if I want to go through and do the same thing for um, CD, CE, CE, and ED, I would just go through that same analysis and know that CD is going to be the same as AB, CD, or CE is the same as BE, and AE is the same as ED. Um, but yeah, our analysis is effectively complete. So now the question is, is this analysis valid? I'm gonna leave that up to you. Um, and then we would take this analysis and move on to that CAD video. Um, if when we, when we have an analysis that we have all of our safety factors greater than zero, um, we know at least in theory, it's gonna survive. We'll see if after we build it, if there's some manufacturing flaws. But that's about it for today. Good luck with your trust building. I hope that this helped and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye-bye.